So this lecture, we are going to talk about uh, the energy for surface. The simplest energy for surface would be actually related to liquid. We'll talk about that. But generally, let's say a, we have a system with a so-called interfacial area, actually surface area of A, okay? And uh, the so-called free energy free energy, the energy that you can use to do other work or transform to other form of energy, free energy per unit interfacial area gamma. If we call it okay, free energy per unit area interfacial area is gamma, then the total free energy, the total free energy for our bulk material would be quite often we write it as two part. The total energy for the system, which is G0 plus A times gamma. What is G0? G0, we say it would be the free energy for the system, assuming what? All material are in the bulk, which is not real which is not real, but let's say an idealized infinite uh, solid material. Every atom is surrounded uh, within the bulk. That gives us the so-called G0, right? Everything uniform, infinite. The actual material per molar, that free energy would be this idealized theoretical one, which assuming everything to be within the bulk plus an extra term because we said actual material always have surface right and what's the surface area contribution it's this a times gamma what is a a is our total surface area what is gamma the gamma is what we call read the excess free energy the excess free energy of the material on the surface per unit uh, surface area. Per unit surface area. Okay, that is the gamma. It has a unit of joule per meter square. It's a surface energy term. And it reflects, pay attention to what I, the word I use, excess free energy. Excess with respect to what? To the bulk. Excess with respect to the bulk. We are not comparing excess with respect to vacuum. It's re, uh, excess with respect to if the atom is within the bulk. Okay. So to understand it further, it's just uh, that gamma term just means the work, the work that must be done that must be expanded at constant temperature and the pressure to create unit surface area from what? From bulk. For example, the material is connected, you break it up, you create two new surfaces. How much of that energy? Okay. So this is the kind of a system free energy. System free energy is two parts. One part is, okay, assuming everything is within the idealized bulk state. The other addition term is, in reality, we have surface area. How much is the surface area? It's A. But per unit area, I have a so-called excess energy, which we call the gamma term. Excess with respect to what? Assuming everything is in the bulk. Okay. So the atom on the surface actually having a higher energy compared within the bulk because as we are going to talk about, we are going to create brick bonds to create surface. Brick bonds needs to what? Spend energy. You need to break bonds, right? You need to spend energy to break bonds. That's the work that must be done to create a surface from what? From bulk material. Okay, and then let's say if we fix temperature, if we fix pressure, and if the surface area increase by a small incremental amount, how much? We say dA. If the surface area increase a little bit, then the free energy change 
what is our free energy term? It is our G term. So if the area changed by dA, the free energy change, we, we would write it as dG, right? Free energy change. If the area increased a little bit, the free energy change, we would call it dG. dG would be this guy drops to what? Zero, because, okay, it's a property for the bulk of the material, assuming idealized, right? So when we do dg zero, that give us zero, because it's bulk, not really change. Plus the d bracket, a gamma term, right? And then if we expand it, that would be our so-called gamma dA plus a d gamma. Make sense? That would be the incremental free energy needed if we are going to increase the surface area by a little bit, dA. And then the simplest one for people to understand would be for liquid. For liquid, quite often people have the so-called surface tension term, which you can measure, right? Surface tension term is something you can measure depending on how high the liquid goes in by capillary force due to counterbalance the gravity. You can easily measure the so-called surface tension. Make sense? So if we say F is the surface tension, surface tension, which quite often has the unit of what? Newton per meter, right? Surface tension. That's the quite often the unit of meter uh, force Newton per meter. And then if for a liquid, if the, we are not dealing with solid, let's say we are dealing with liquid because that's the simplest one to understand or to measure. If we are dealing with the liquid, the free energy change would come from another way is what? Work, right? We said the free energy change is the work you do to the system. DW. And what is DW? Work is force times dA. Force times dA. Okay? That is kind of like when we say per unit, per unit length and the per unit area. We're dealing with a fixed, for fixed amount. Okay? And then we would have this. dG would be, if we put the dA to the left, right? We put the dA to the left. F would be dG over what? dG over dA. And this term, gamma dA over dA, that gives us gamma, right? And then this term, A times d gamma over dA. Make sense? That's kind of like uh, the free energy change would equal to the work. Free energy change would be the work, and the work is force times your incremental area. And then we put the dA to the left, the force, or force actually, I strictly speaking, it's force per unit length, would be gamma plus this term. And then, for liquid, for liquid, we would say, okay, the surface energy, it does not change with area. The surface energy does not change with area for liquid. The arrangement, put it another way, the, the arrangement of the energy on the surface with respect to the bulk cannot change with 